Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel where I share great ideas and show you how to do things that you might have even thought was almost impossible. And uh, today in this video and the one following, I'm going to show you how to make the uh, spoked wheels that I showed you in the introduction uh, video a few days ago. So just as a review, this is what they look like. Uh, this is a 20 spoke four spoke wheel and uh, it would look very attractive on a on, a, on an old time car and also um, by using this method of course you can make uh, this was the first prototype I made uh, with uh, 12 spokes uh, larger diameter but uh, you can make with the method I'm going to show you you can make as many as you want well as many as your diameter of your tire will, you can adequately do. And uh, so uh, we'll just get started on this right away because I bet you're really excited. Okay, the first step uh, that you do is just take it to your wood lathe and bore a hole. In this case, I'm using, I believe, one and three eighths diameter Forrester bit. Uh, you want to go in about an inch. Uh, so you have enough left over to make a, a, another wheel. Uh, this lathe is the only commercial type lathe I have. It was uh, in the high school when I started teaching in 1970. So it's, and they built the school in the 50s, late 50s. So it's a fairly old lathe, but I'm really happy to, to actual uh, own that lathe from uh, my first uh, teaching job there. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, we'll bore this one out and uh, then I'll do the rest of them. So you put your lathe. Another thing I thought to mention is mark, uh, find a place where you know where it is and mark uh, the position because you're going to be probably taking this in and out possibly. Uh, at least I am because I'm going to do all four at once here. And another thing you need to do is put your lathe on slow speed too for the force of this so you don't overheat it. There we go. That was pretty easy, eh? Didn't take very long. Okay, the next step is to drill a, a half inch hole all the way through. And this is a half inch Forrester bit, or you probably could use a twist drill or a wood shop bill, uh, drill of any sort that you have there. You just want to make sure the hole is exactly in the center. So that's one reason for uh, uh, marking uh, your pieces, because if you do multiples, you need to get it to run true again. And uh, these chucks are not always right on, so it's good to be a, have a little bit of precaution there. This bit, uh, because it doesn't have much room for the chips to come out, you'll have to come out back and forth to make sure the chips keep clean, cleaning out and so on until you get your holes all the way through. Okay, there we go. Okay, I've got all the holes drilled and uh, ready for the next step. Maybe you've already guessed what it, what it is. Anyway, I've uh, cut some half inch dowels and now all we have to do is put those in, in and uh, glue them in. And we've got the, cent we've got the center of our, uh, of our wheel already made just like that. Wasn't that quick and easy and fast? The first ones that I did, I machined this out, left that part of the wheel, but I'm trying to make something that's easy, simple, quick, that anybody can do. So I'll uh, go get all these glued in and we'll be ready for one more step and then we'll be ready to put start doing the spokes. Okay, the last step before uh, we start our spokes is to drill a hole through the center of the dowel uh, for the axle. And that could probably be done before you put it in, but 
We want to make sure it runs true with the outside, so it might be the best to do it that way. I know I thought about making some of these up with the center in, but it maybe is not that that good. Now, to get a hole in the center, you need something very special. It's actually for metalwork, but I've used it in wood a lot because it's super important. It's called a center drill. Uh, you may have the most expensive equipment uh, in your shop, but if you don't have one of these, it costs probably five dollars. Your shop's certainly not complete. This has a taper on it. Uh, it can be used uh, for the live center on your wood sh woodwork. Anytime I'm drilling something that's small, I center drill it with this for the for the live center and uh, locate screws, all sorts of things. And these come in various sizes. Uh, this is one of the medium sized ones you might say, but I've got them all the way up to half inch and even smaller. Anyway, another thing that I do did on this to try to get the holes uh, in the center is that uh, is a shortened drill bit. I just took it, cut it in half, and resharpened it. That way, when it's held in the chuck here, there's little chance of it uh, deflecting. Because if you look at the end of a drill bit, it's ground away on the two flutes. It's actually quite weak out farther, especially with small bits. So. I've shortened it up. Uh, the other ones I did, I did with the full length, but uh, I want to try this and see if I can make it even better. So the first thing is to use your center bit, and that will allow that uh, drill bit to to start right where it's supposed to, and not uh, wander around. Just bring that up there, and uh, another thing it might it probably will work better too is to increase the speed of your lathe. But I'll get this started, and then I'll I'll do that. Uh, so you just come down that center part, that, that small part that can be sharpened too, and up onto the taper. And then you're ready to uh, use your uh, quarter inch bit. Another thing that I'm going to do on this is I'm going to drill this side about halfway through. Then I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to drill the other half. I'm going to use the center bit and then drill the other side halfway through. Because what I found is, is when you're drilling in wood because of the grain, that it uh, tends to deflect as it goes into the wood and it won't be centered on the other side. So we're going to try, we're going to do that. And uh, so what's the next thing I do? Okay, we just need to put our, my shortened quarter inch bit in. I'm going to use a quarter inch axle. And And that's all there is to it. Well, there's this stage all done. Um, I made an extra one here um, because quite often, when you if you just have the right amount, there'll be one that you don't quite like. You may make a little mistake on it there. So while I was doing it, I whipped out another one, and um, and one of them. The peg wasn't in quite quite uh, right, so I turned it over and uh, drilled the peg out and put it in again and got it uh, a little better the first time. When you uh, go get your dowel, um, it almost say take drill your drill a hole in something, take it to the store, and find a dowel that's just a perfect fit. The ones I got was a little too loose, so if you just weren't careful and get it quite centered, it didn't center uh, out uh, once the glue dried there. So, But if you make a mistake, turn it over, 
drill it out and uh, put a new one in. But it's important to get each hole right in the center. Okay, I've set it up for uh, drilling the spoke holes. To do that, you need some sort of jig. Now here's the jig that uh, I built. It uh, Earlier in my videos you'll find videos of how to build this or and there's even a diagram or I can send you a diagram and I demonstrate how it's used there. It's used to cut tire treads and all kinds of things this can be used for. But anyway, I'm going to cut 12, drill 12 holes. Actually it will be two banks of 12 holes and uh, there's that a little spring and there's a little pointer there that goes into those holes. There's better jigs that people have built but I found this work fairly successful. And we come around here to the other side and you'll notice here if you haven't seen the other drill there's different holes in there so you can set it up for cutting tire treads for different diameters and other things there. Um, the setup that you need to do is you have to choose a drill bit that matches the size of the hole and then looking across by the end there you line it up so it's exactly in the center of the of that bolt that's sticking out where we're going to attach the uh, wheel. On the wheel itself I've uh, see I've put uh, a couple lines where I'm going to put the holes. The uh, one towards your left is going to be the straight cut holes and the other one I'll make them at a slant. The other thing of course you need to do is set the stop so the drill just about touches the, uh, the drill, the uh, bolt that you see down there. It's actually part of this and uh, I've laid it to quarter inch. First time I did it on one of the other ones I didn't uh, set the stop and I thought well it'll, when I touch the steel it'll stop but I ended up drilling holes in it. Uh, kind of ruined the surface there a little bit but it's still useful. And of course once that's all set down you clamp it down tight. But you need some sort of drig that you, jig that you can access, index to uh, do the holes evenly spaced. Anyway, I'll set this up and we'll get busy drilling some holes. Okay, I'm ready to drill. Uh, set up pretty much where I want it. And uh, I'm going to turn it clockwise and with my finger over here, my thumb, you can see it wiggling around. I'm going to hold that pointer right down into those index and then keep the tension on there so it's held firm. And I'm going to use a, a high speed. Uh, uh, I want to use one of the higher speeds. It'll drill more accurately that way and it won't wander. And then I'll be drilling it down, up, down, up to break through the first uh, layer here and then once I get to the bottom it won't have to drill very far there. Now it wasn't that easy and it didn't take very long so now I'm just going to go ahead and, and drill all the other ones and uh, then we'll be set it up for the slant, slanted ones. 
So I'll just take this on, off. By the way, I um, didn't mention, I guess, before what I'm using for spokes is uh, toothpicks. There we go. All evenly spaced holes. Okay, I've got it set up to do the second center set of holes. Marked little marks right between the uh, uh, holes already drilled so I can see how I'm coming along. Lined it up on center again and set the stop. First, I tested it out here. The first uh, hole I drilled, I forgot to set the stop. stop. I went back and did that and I'm ready to go here. So I'll show you what I did here. It's probably wasn't what I was planning on doing originally, but I just used some boards there and uh, tilted the table and clamped it down. It was super fast and easy to do. This table doesn't tilt very well, very easily. So anyway, that's the setup there and we'll drill some holes there. I found uh, Spearminting, you're always going to get some deflection on the uh, drill there, but you want to keep it as minimum as possible. I uh, was uh, experimenting with just starting it very, very slowly, and then very slowly through the top wood, and maybe the grain's not touching, not catching it and deflecting it, but uh, you'll get something that looks quite good. It may not be perfect, but uh, to, once it's all together, it'll look pretty good. Anyway, I'll mount my camera here and uh, drill a few holes. So before we put our uh, spokes in, from drilling through the hole, drilling the holes, you get a little bit of breakout inside there. So what I'm just going to do is uh, take a little bit of sandpaper and just clean them up. Clean them up. That's all you have to do. That looks a lot better now.